हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द यंग ऑर्थोपॉड एंड टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट कंजनाइटल स्यूडो आर्थ्रोसिस ऑफ द टिबिया कंजनाइटल स्यूडो आर्थ्रोसिस ऑफ टिबिया इज अ कंडीशन ऑफ अननोन ओरिजिन इन व्हिच द डिसकंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द बोन एट द जंक्शन ऑफ मिडिल एंड डिस्टल थर्ड इज प्रेजेंट एट बर्थ और डेवलप्स देयर आफ्टर ड्यूरिंग द ग्रोथ पीरियड लीडिंग टू एबनॉर्मल मोबिलिटी एंड क्रिएटिंग एन इल्यूजन ऑफ अ फॉल्स जॉइंट The upper and lower ends of the long bone have a normal structural appearance but as each portion of the diaphysis approaches the defect they become progressively tapered their end sclerotic and medullary canal obliterated the gap between the bone ends is occupied by a very cellular fibrous tissue which seems to be continuous with the thickened periosteum Congenital anterolateral bowing of the tibia when complicated by fracture through the weakened shaft results in a pseudoarthrosis Congenital bowing and congenital cyst of tibia are popularly called pseudoarthrotic lesions. Approximately 40% of the patients present with lesions typical of neurofibromatosis or von Recklinghausen disease. X-rays of typical pseudoarthrosis shows absence of bone formation in the tibia at the junction of middle and distal thirds with varying degrees of diaphyseal tapering, sclerosis and obliteration of medullary canal at the pseudoarthrotic interval. Usually the fibula is unaffected although it may display pseudoarthrosis at the same level. The distal tibial segment is usually angulated backwards resulting in equinus of the foot. Multiple classification systems have been created to describe congenital pseudoarthrosis of the tibia. Most commonly used is the Boyd classification which has divided congenital pseudoarthrosis of tibia in 6 types. In type 1 of the Boyd classification, pseudoarthrosis occurs with anterior bowing and defect in the tibia present at birth. Other congenital deformities may also be present. Type 2 is the most common. In this pseudoarthrosis occurs with anterior bowing and hourglass constriction of the tibia present at the birth. Spontaneous fracture or fracture after minor trauma commonly occurs before 2 years of the age. This is so called high risk tibia. It is often associated with neurofibromatosis and has the poorest prognosis. In type 3, pseudoarthrosis develops in a congenital cyst, usually near the junction of a middle and distal thirds of the tibia. Anterior bowing may precede or follow the development of a fracture. In type 4, pseudoarthrosis originates in a sclerotic segment of the bone in the classic location without narrowing of the tibia. The medullary canal is partially or completely obliterated and an insufficiency or stress fracture develops in the cortex of the tibia and gradually extends through the sclerotic bone leading to formation of a pseudoarthrosis. It has a good prognosis when it is treated before the insufficiency fracture becomes complete. In type 5, pseudoarthrosis of the tibia occurs with a dysplastic fibula. The prognosis is good if the lesion is confined to the fibula. If the lesion progresses to the tibial pseudoarthrosis, the natural history usually resembles that of type 2. In type 6, The pseudoarthrosis occurs as an androgynous neurofibroma or schwannoma. This is an extremely rare condition. The prognosis depends on aggressiveness and treatment of the androgynous lesion. The Crawford classification divides congenital pseudoarthrosis of tibia in two main types. Type 1 is non-dysplastic with anterior bowing and increased cortical density and type 2 is dysplastic. It shows failure of tubulation and narrowed sclerotic medullary canal. It has two subtypes type 2A and type 2B. The main objectives of treatment of pseudoarthrosis of tibia are to achieve union, to prevent refracture, to correct the limb length inequality, to correct associated growth abnormalities and to prevent ankle deformities and arthritis. The pseudoarthrosis must be excised to achieve union. Refracture can be prevented by splinting the limb in an orthosis or keeping an intramedullary nail until skeletal maturity. The shortening can be minimized by obtaining early union of the pseudoarthrosis and for established shortening limb equalization procedures can be done.
The valgus deformity at the ankle joint can be minimized by retaining an intramedullary nail that crosses the ankle joint and ensuring union of the fibular pseudoarthrosis. The treatment options include intramedullary nailing and cortical bone grafting, microvascular free fibular transfer and the use of Elizarov's technique. The choice of treatment depends upon multiple factors which include age of the child, chances of obtaining union, simplicity and ease of the procedure and the cost. Because the treatment of congenital pseudoarthrosis of tibia is challenging, recombinant human bone morphogenic protein should be considered as an adjunct to the treatment. Let's discuss each of these options one by one. Intramedullary nailing and cortical bone grafting. There are three essential steps to this surgery. The first step is excision of the pseudoarthrosis which involves excising the tapered ends of the bone and surrounding thick periosteum. The second step is intramedullary nailing. A rush nail or a Peter Williams nail may be used which is passed from the heel to the proximal tibial metaphysis. And the third step is bone grafting to facilitate union. Microvascular free fibular transfer involves radical excision of the pseudoarthrotic segment followed by harvesting a long segment of opposite fibula along with its vascular pedicle. The vessels of the transferred fibula are anastomosed to the local vessels and the transferred fibula is fixed securely to the tibia. In the Elizarov's technique, the Elizarov frame is applied. The pseudoarthrosis is excised and the fragments are compressed. The compression can be applied in different ways, but resection and acute compression is recommended as bone grafting can also be combined with the procedure. A metaphyseal osteotomy is performed and the tibial lengthening is begun after 7 to 10 days. The highest union rates have been reported for this approach as opposed to longitudinal compression, side-to-side -side compression or segmental bone transport. So this was all about congenital pseudoarthrosis of tibia. If you like this video then don't forget to subscribe to our channel The Young Orthopod. For more topics in orthopedics and daily quiz, like our page on Facebook, The Young Orthopod, and also subscribe to our blog, The Young Orthopod at Blogger. The links are in the description. See you soon.